It is a little bit middle of the road. This feels like the version you would see on maybe a regular season of Drag Race or maybe even at a fancy club, but definitely not on All Stars. Hello, my beautiful Light Brights. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen, and I am the brightest crane in the box. Girl, if you are new here, or if you haven't already done so, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I feel like I say this every week, but you still haven't done so. So girl, get on it. Today, we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of RuPaul's Drag Race, All Stars 9, Episode 7, and let you know which looks are fab and fabulous or just drab and awful. And make sure to stay tuned all the way to the end, where I let you know who had my fab and drab of the week. This week's runway theme is Widow Week for me, where the queens must give us their best deadly looks. And I mean deadly like as in, she dead. Not as in deadly as in like, ooh, ha, 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 ha. But some queens did go a little bit scary. Uh, but maybe I'm revealing too much. So let's get into it. Let's find out who shined bright and who faded into obscurity. First up, it's Nina West. And Nina West is coming out in this uh, black veil and this uh, black dress. As she lifts up her veil, you see her face is painted in this like white and purple creepy way. She said she is giving you Disney's Haunted Mansion, which when you pan down to the bottom of her dress with the big like doors or things definitely resembles that. This definitely feels like a Disney take on a widow, but hey, let's go with it. As she continues down the runway, she rips off the black costume to reveal that she is not the widow, but she is now the bride. The bride look is made up of this white corseted little piece that is got full of lace and underneath it she's got this full lace bodysuit in this lavender color and so she's giving you black, white, and lavender all over. I will commend uh, Nina because this does feel like a cohesive look. This feels very put together and Lena has been hitting and missing a lot this season and let's face it she is not the fashion queen. So when she came out with this, I was like, okay, it's it's not bad. I do prefer the white piece underneath over the black piece on top of it. But I always say if you're gonna do a reveal, the bottom piece should look better. And that it does. So good on her for that. I, th I feel like the whole thing looks a little cartoony and a little bit costumey, but somehow that works for me because it's Nina. Had like got me or plastic done something like this, I would be like, what is going on? But coming from Nina, who is a little bit more of this campy queen, a little bit more of like, this fun person, it kind of makes sense for her. But if it was me, I would have switched up a few little things. First, it was the coat on top. The coat on top was fine, but uh, it felt a little cartoony. So I probably would have lost the doors in the front. I think it would have looked a lot more elegant had it been plain. And then I think she has like these printed chains on her. I wish she would just like take real chains and made these giant chains wrapped around her. I think that would have felt a little bit more real, a little bit more constructed, but the idea of the first look was there. When she rips it off, she reveals to this gown underneath, which I like the contrast between the black and the white and the dead and the bride. I think this makes a lot of sense. I'm just not sure about this specific silhouette. Coming from Nina, this would have made sense, but I felt she could have done something differently. Imagine if instead of this giant ball gown, it was like this really skinny, dress so that she would have come on from like big matronly to like slutty sexy uh bride you know i think that would have really done it and she could have used all these same colors and all these same techniques basically taking it from a ball gown into like a cocktail dress i think that would have been really cool all in all the way it is now is okay it's not necessarily my favorite but it's also not necessarily bad it definitely fits nina's aesthetic i don't know that many other people would consider this good but for nina it is and because it is good for nina i'm gonna go ahead and give her a soft bow next up it's Roxy Andrews and Roxy Andrews comes out wearing white. Yes, she is wearing white to a widow theme. That girl must have really hated her husband. 
she comes out wearing white and as she turns around you see that she is like bloody all over and holding the bloody axe so she may be the bride but she definitely killed the husband and she is definitely the widow uh i think this was a very bold choice to be coming out in white in a widow theme because obviously most people would be coming out in black because when you think of death you think of black you do not think of white white is supposed to be celebratory and wedding i love this just a position and play on the color i think this was also really smart for her to stand out from all the other queens knowing that the other queens probably would have went with darker color palettes then she's got like this kind of like blood all over the face but it's not really like blood it is just like gemstones all over so it is like the most elegant blood you've ever seen in your life i don't know how much this fits the theme i feel like roxy wants to do roxy and roxy is gonna do roxy and so she made it work for her and i think that that's kind of fine i always like when people interpret the theme to their own strengths and that's what roxy is doing here the whole overall look and vibe is definitely giving me lady gaga in american horror story so i kind of got the reference I'm I'm just assuming that's what her reference is because white with the blood it just it just matches you know what i mean it just matches like, this can't be a coincidence all in all not bad and because it's not bad it's definitely gonna be a fab. Next up, it's Angeria. And Angeria, as soon as she walk out, you see the spider's web right around her face and the tall, luscious hair. As they pan down, you see this gown that is a little bit crimson and a little bit black. She's definitely giving you those spooky, ooky vibes, that little black widow fantasy. She definitely leaned into the widow part and took it to like this spider's concept, which I kind of like, black widow, widow. But it also plays on a little bit of that Halloween trope, a little bit of those spooky things that I love things that are a little bit weird and a little bit spooky so this was right up my alley she goes on to explain that her hair is actually an urn and i'm like yes mama that is amazing because i actually love this hair and i didn't even realize it was an urn i just loved it because it was so tall it was pointy it had stones in it it had everything working for it and then she tells me it's an urn and i was like oh my god she really tied that all back in with this hair and i was like yes that just worked so so good then we get on to the dress and the dress is also beautiful it's got lots of layers into it it's got lots of materials into it it's got a lot of different textures into it and that's what you need when you're doing a very dark color is you need this subtlety and all of these textures to make it feel expensive otherwise it just looks like a piece of fabric and this does not feel like a piece of fabric on top of it when you are on a stage um, some colors just don't pop black is one of those colors that doesn't necessarily pop so people don't see the little details that are in it but the fact that she did that little crimson red lining behind it really made some of those subtleties come out overall this is like one of the most expensive halloween costumes that someone can buy it is a little costumey and i actually don't care at all it is freaking amazing and definitely gonna be a buff Next up, we have Plastic Tiara, and Plastic Tiara is coming out in an Arai. I hope I'm saying that right. I probably am butchering it, but it is basically a traditional Vietnamese uh, attire that uh, is used for special occasions. And she, of course, got this one custom made. This traditional garment has this beautiful print on it with all the rhinestones on it to really elevate it to the next level. And then she's paired it with this blonde hair that's also coiffed to perfection with these little things in it. This gown, as soon as it comes out, I have a little bit of mixed emotion. Hold on, listen to me. The reason why I have mixed emotion is because this is so beautiful, it is so amazing. It's got all of the things you want from a gown and Plastique Tiara is week after week showing us that she is the fashion queen and she is gonna push this to the next, next, next level, which is what we want from an all-star. The problem that I'm fighting with is that I feel like I've seen this done by Plastique now a number of times. When you flash back to her promo outfit, she did the same color scheme with the same sort of idea, obviously a different silhouette, but it re reminded me of that. And then a few weeks ago when it was the reveal runway, her cover-up was also in this purple traditional outfit. So I feel like she's now doing the same concept over and over again. And that's the part that's really killing me. Is this one good? Yes, it's amazing. Is this one better than some of the other ones? Potentially, yes. And that's the part where I'm like, this should be a perfect score because it is so amazing. But because I feel like I've seen this again and Plastic Tiara is redoing the same concept, I'm gonna knock her down a point and give her four stars. But at the end of the day, it is still amazing and still gonna get a buff. 
next up, it's Chanel, and Chanel is coming out in this big black overcoat with this big hood. She's a little bit hunched over as she's wiping away her tear from her dead husband. Now, as she walks out, you can clearly see that this is a reveal. She rips it off to reveal to this giant Rococo style dress that is giving you a really rich bitch. Now, I was surprised that this was going to come out. Obviously, you knew that it was going to be a reveal, but uh, the way she was hunched over, the way that this cover was made, I thought she was going to go in a sort of snow white direction because the way that she was hunched and the way that the hood was made, it definitely made it feel like it was that old lady that was giving you the apple, you know what I mean? But it isn't, and it is this Rococo style. Now, let's get into this dress. I will say, firstly, I am happy that she didn't go 100% Marie Antoinette because we've seen so many Marie Antoinette. She definitely still stays in the same era, you know, a little bit of that rich vibe, a little bit of that Bridgerton vibe, but it definitely felt like another character in the story, which we appreciate. I do think it looks rich. I do think it looks luscious. I do feel it's a little bit costumey, but that's okay. We are drag queens at the end of the day. Everything should be a little bit over the top, right? Otherwise, what's the fun? If I had to change one thing, I think that her hair should have been bigger. And the reason for this is that her hips are so big that I think that bigger hair would have helped proportionize this a little bit more, but she still looks amazing. And of course, she is painted to perfection but like it's chanel she knows how to paint a mug like let's be real here right all in all this is pretty damn great and because of that she's definitely gonna get a bow next up it's george's and george's is coming out with this black fur coat and this black hair she's wiping her away her tears and then you see that diamonds come off of her tissue she rips over the dress and she's got this red sexy dress underneath she is the gold digger going to the funeral now the first thing i will say is that i understood the concept immediately as soon as she walked out when you walk out in a black fur coat it's already giving you that like rich bitch fantasy but what threw me off was the hair the hair felt a very flat and very pedestrian so she was definitely playing into who this woman is i just don't know that i like this woman she comes down to the end of the runway she pulls it off and she reveals to this red dress now because i had already figured it out this was like no surprise obviously the piece underneath was going to be something scandalous and skimpy and fun but it was kind of a little bit of a letdown i think that the dress underneath is good it's not great and the jacket itself was just an off the rack jacket so i was expecting more i felt like this could have went a lot bigger first up let's talk about the coat i think the coat is okay but i feel like she probably should have got this custom made since this is all stars and kind of got one made with a long train on it i think that would have been so cute so over the top so drag then we get into the hair i think the hair could have been taller bigger and then like still kept it black still kept it feminine still kept it flowy but just giving you like that exaggerated shape when it came to the red dress underneath i think she could have also done more made it a little bit skimpier and by that i mean imagine this with like just garter parping through underneath or a slit that goes a little bit up or really really slutty at the bottom or imagine she did this with really big breasts and then gave you more of that like Jessica Rabbit fantasy I think that would have really played up this character the way the character is right now it is a little bit middle of the road this feels like the version you would see on maybe a regular season of Drag Race or maybe even at a fancy club but definitely not on all stars all in all this was not good enough and it's gonna get a drab Next up, it's Gottmik, and Gottmik is coming out as the candelabra. She's coming out in this black latex outfit with candles all over her that look like melting wax. She painted it with a little bit of a lighter face to give you a little bit of that spooky vibe and put on the little veil. Oh my god, this was next level. This is how you take a theme like Widow and really bring it up. It's giving me a little bit of like Lumiere in Beauty and the Beast, but like the creepy version if he got burnt in a fire. And I love it. I think that this is both elegant and fashion, but also conceptual and, and a little bit costumey the way I want my drag to be. You can really see that she thought of the whole theme and then like got it executed to perfection. 
I guarantee this must have cost her a lot of money and a lot of time. Now I'm really curious how much time they had to prepare for this because Gottmik is really elevating it at every level. She is giving Plastic Tiara a run for her money and honestly, Gottmik was coming in as a fashion queen so she was trying to top herself and top herself she did. And that's probably the only time she's top because she's probably a bottom. Ooh, sorry, probably shouldn't have said that. This is giving everything that it needs to give. This was amazing and definitely gonna be a Bye. Next up, it's Miss Vanjie, and Miss Vanjie is coming out with her big black fur coat, her umbrella, and her blonde hair. As she rocks down the runway, she opens her jacket just to reveal all the sexy lingerie with all of the jewelry all over it. She is the rich bitch fantasy that we've been talking about all episode. Georges, take note, this is how it's done. This to me is what Georges was trying to do, but elevated to the max. First up, let's talk about this coat. Oh my God, this coat. She's got like all of those like fur tails on it and it just looked so expensive. She then paired it with this expensive looking wig that kind of really makes you feel the whole fantasy. You already start seeing some jewels in it. And so then she reveals to this lingerie. Now this could be the most basic lingerie. I have no idea, but it doesn't matter because it is super sexy, which was the point. She's got all of like the diamond jewelry all over it. And she's using it as a little bit of a peekaboo to this coat because really the outfit is about the coat and the lingerie is just there to help tell that story. Now, I don't know where she got this lingerie, but this is really nice lingerie. Maybe she got it custom made. I'd be surprised if she did because why get lingerie custom made? But hey, you know what? It looks so amazing on her that you never know with these queens. All in all, she is giving what you need to be given. The whole dress works. The whole vibe works. The whole thing is getting a bow. And that is it for this week's runway. What did you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. My personal opinion, I love this theme. I feel like we may have seen versions of this theme done in the past, but this one feels like new fresh take and I love how queens interpret it, especially that this time they didn't all go black and some of them went white. So uh, I think overall it was a great theme. I was a little bit under impressed with some of the outfits, maybe because I've just learned to expect so much more from these all-star seasons. So I feel like a lot of them were just like regular drag race while some of these other ones came in as being all-stars but with only eight queens we definitely had a few standouts speaking of standouts let's get into those fabs and drabs of the week so who had my drab of the week my drab of the week this week goes to Georges. no surprise she's the only one i gave a drab to i just felt like she just didn't try as hard as everybody else and i know that's really horrible to say because she probably spent some good money but enough about the negative and let's get into the positive who had my fab of the week well my fab of the week this week had to go to no surprise there i love this outfit from beginning to end it told a full story it really elevated everything and honestly when doing my ratings after seeing got mix i actually went back and had to lower other people's scores who i originally put five stars to until i saw got mix because got mix was not only five stars but six seven eight i would have given it so much this was like one of my favorite outfits can i say all time i just really love it maybe i'm weird like that but hey that's just me. So that is it for this week's episode. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to hear your comments. I feel like I'm not getting that many comments. So please comment down below. I will read them and I will reply back. And once you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Once again, my name is Neon Noir at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms. And I'll see you in one of my next videos. Bye-bye. <laughs>